Welcome to chapter 2 of tutorial 7 for case officers. In this tutorial uh, chapter we are going to deal with a, creating a case and a permit application and differentiating between those two. We are currently working on a checklist which will guide users and uh, heritage officers on the criteria um, and old fields which were on the forms. Uh, which have been replaced by SARS. Um, the fields are just in different places on SARS, so a site uh, information is in the site, for instance, or the object that you're applying for p permission to export, and so the, uh, the old form um, system uh, is just repackaged, if you like, um, in different places on SARS, and that takes a little bit of uh, understanding on how that all works and to change from, from the old system. Right, so what we always do is go to our dashboard. If you're stuck on the home page, remember you can always go back to the dashboard at the top right. Um, so click back there and this will take you back to your dashboard. Um, your cases that you're attached to will be listed. Um, and uh, we can see there are no cases. Now the idea with SARS is that the applicants themselves are submitting the case as if they're filling on the form, the information on the form, the old forms. Um, so normally you, your first step would be to explore your unassigned cases. So under explore cases, unassigned cases, you'd be checking this list all the time to see uh, what, what cases have come in and uh, th this view lists cases which are in receive status and have no case officer attached to them. So in other words, they've just come in um, and they need to be um, assigned. Okay, so let's take uh, this Kronspan case. Um, this happens to be a um, probably an environmental management plan um, and it's a mining application. Uh, and one of the uh, staff at SARA has been capturing this to catch up the backlog. And uh, this, um, depending on the geographical area, would be assigned to one of the case officers at SARA. So let's have a look. This is um, uh, perhaps it's been mapped. Um, no, not yet. Um, there hopefully is some documentation. No, not yet. So there's not much information on this one. It's just being created, and I'm under the impression that. Um, the um, the rest of the information will probably f be filled in tomorrow morning on this particular case. It seems to have been done halfway. So let's go back to unassigned cases and pick something else. Um, let's take this one by Anton and uh, have a look. Okay, so as a case officer, you, you're interested in a few things. You want to check whether the application has been filled in correctly um, and send back the, the case to the applicant if they haven't filled the information incorrectly. And we use the return to applicant status if you've bounced it back for missing information. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, the first section is the case intro and under that they're applying to SARA to development and minerals. Okay, so it's not particularly helpful that they've only used the group tag for development. It should be a 38.8. So SARA is a commentary body in this. Um, and we'll look a bit further um, in the documentation uploaded whether there's any additional information. The applicant has agreed to the terms and conditions. Comments are open at the moment because we haven't passed any decisions comments. Um, once we've passed our final comment, or, or in this case, we would close the, the, the comments. So the public is able to log on to this case at any stage now and submit heritage comments. Under case header, um, it says anthracite. He hasn't filled in a proposal description, so that's not particularly use, useful. The date is the application date, which is automatic. Um, and then the um, this is the applicant, this is a company, primary resources, he's filled in that information. Um, he's the consultant in this case. Um, and inventory links, it's not um, linked to a per permit, so there's no particular site that's been linked to this application. Other refs, um, the D 
DMR, would, I would have expected to see a DMR number here, uh, the mining um, department, and that hasn't been filled in either. The location info, there's no red um, polygon anywhere, so he hasn't mapped the, the site yet. So again, we can't process this case without that information. And under the admin section, uh, this is not available to the applicant anyway. This is only for case officers. So here, I can, as an additional button, I can control the status in addition to the one on the right when you're viewing the case. I can change this one here over here while I'm in edit mode as well. I would enter my official reference number and my case officer. Uh, in this case, would be myself. Um, and you can see I come up now in the user name there because I'm logged in as a SARA person and I have the rights to find other SARA officials in, uh, in my profile. So I can put uh, Catherine and Smuts, but if I try and put, let's say, Bernadette, no, Bernadette works at DeMarfa and she's not available as a, as, a, as a selection there. There is an override actually, if I hit the search, I can choose Bernadette's name but the quick search is to, to help case officers um, enter the, ca the relevant case officer quickly. So this filters querying um, just SARA officials because of my, my affiliation to SARA under my profile. So let's do um, applicant and uh, I'll go back and edit this even though this is a real case later on. Okay, under case notes I can enter um, any additional things which aren't um, relevant to the public. Just notes, you know, maybe missing paperwork or um, missing map and um, uh, proposal description, etc. Okay, so that's just for me as the case officer. This is not, it's a private field. Um, meetings, this is how I control the agenda I mentioned earlier. So under, um, under this section, uh, we can uh, apply this to a SAR meeting and pick a particular committee, set a date for comments that are due for those committee members. I can even set an agenda number. So typically, say, BELCOM, um, I would use different sections of the Act, like Section 27. My declared sites, I would put 27.1 and then 27.2 for the next one, so that my agenda, when I download it from Excel, is automatically sorted by the relevant sections of the Act. That's one way of handling it. Um, or you just use 1, 2, 3, 4, 1.1, 1.2, depending on how you want to go along. Or leave it blank if you just want to dump the, the cases um, as they come in. The action tags, uh, if I request something after I've generated a case decision or comment, I would use these action tags that I can filter out the database by all the various uh, requests, like I am an AIA phase one that I've requested. Um, and then you can flag due dates where you're expecting this report or this assessment to take place. This is particularly useful with conservation management plans or with um, archaeological monitoring where uh, the development has been approved or given the go-ahead and you're expecting monitoring reports during the uh, development um, construction phase. Um, the attached docs, this is familiar in the previous tutorials, same thing, you can add images, additional documents and consent letters. This is the, uh, for permits, we would use consent letters, um, and this is a letter from the owner or the curating institution like Azico, where they would be storing um, archaeological material that has been excavated, and this is where you would upload their consent letters. Um, remember, the images, you can't e upload PDFs to the case images, you, you can't upload um, uh, images to the consent letters, so it's PDF only here, and under additional documents, you can upload a range of different files, including zip files, raw files, and so on. So if the, you want to upload a KML file to attach docs, which is not going to be directly mapped in the auto mapper uh, or geocoder, then you can do it here. It might be additional information which is relevant. Uh, remember the difference between advanced upload and the normal upload. This choose file here will only allow me to choose one file at a time whereas the advanced upload pops up the multi-file upload. And I can drag files in here, and uh, or I can click on add files, and I can select a number of um, different files in one go. And it will pop up these for in the queue, and then when I hit start upload, it will start uploading these uh, 
the three files. I can cancel them by clicking the red link there. File attach, this searches the temp directory on the server. Sometimes you have files which time out if you have a poor internet connection and it will look at the um, uh, temporary directory on Cyrus and it will find files. Now there's nothing at the moment up there um, but if there were you would click on the file that comes up in the drop down and click attach um, so you don't have to re-upload the file if it failed. Um, again this is not used very often so you're generally going to be using advanced upload or one at a time clicking on the choose file and upload option. Um, the little balloons um, will provide you additional information if they are there available in certain fields. Um, so those pop up, just note that's what those are for. Um, and then once you've assessed the case and checked everything is correct, you can hit save. Right. Um, now, things to look out for. Um, we're going to deal uh, in chapter three with a permit case and we'll have a look at that in how it works a bit differently to a general development case like this one. Um, the criteria and the things we're looking for are, are different to development cases. So let's end this chapter over here.